Hello from Idaho. I strive to provide interesting videos about motorcycles, fabrication, welding, electronics, machining, and general creativity. I hope you enjoy. Well, hello from Idaho. I'm back on the milling machine again today. As you know, I've made a <coughs> dash plaque for Fabrat uh, off-road wrecker and for Matt's off-road recovery off-road wrecker. Matt hasn't uh, received his yet. Well, actually, uh, he has received it, but I don't know if he's open or not. He's getting busy for the off. He's getting really busy for the off-road wrecker games, and so uh, we'll just see how that goes. One of my viewers. I follow this guy that's making a, a pretty capable YJ LS powered uh, tons uh, V-shaped wedge in the back um, a really nice set of choices and he's a good fabricator and best of all he doesn't think he's a comedian he doesn't think he's an internet personality he just does fabrication and he does it really well and so I enjoy watching him <coughs> I was surprised when he contacted me and said you know I've been watching you make uh, stuff for fab rats and uh, I was wondering if you would make me a uh, steering wheel cap and he showed me a picture of this uh, of this really nice steering wheel that's got a hex shaped steering wheel cap and he sent along a sketch and uh, some other stuff and we negotiated for a little bit and I decided I would take it on um, I used to sell my mach machine time um, as a little side business and uh, Typically when a machine is running, it's about 60 bucks an hour. Uh, computer time and other stuff uh, is about 30 bucks an hour. Sam's a good guy. And so uh, we negotiated a price uh, much lower than that. But the more I think about it, I think I'm just going to give it to him. And uh, he doesn't know that yet, so uh, it'll be a surprise. Anyway, I've been working on it. The machine ran uh, most of yesterday. Uh, this is a pretty small design and and uh, since I was able to create it from scratch in Fusion uh, 360 it's a pretty efficient design to cut. I've learned that when you start out with a, uh, a, a file that was originally a graphic that you converted to DXF and then converted to 3D that there's a whole bunch of extraneous operation moves and whatnot that uh, do nearly nothing but it wants to cut in between each one of the spline connections and it takes a long time to do that. This one is much more efficient and so even though I use the same end mills, quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth inch and one millimeter, the stuff that was cut with one millimeter was almost none. Um, at any rate, uh, I'm about 90% uh, done with it. I've got to uh, chamfer some holes for uh, he wants a flathead stainless hex uh, screw so I gotta chamfer some holes for that and drill the holes and then I'll be done on the milling machine I uh, I may throw it in the uh, vibratory uh, tumbler uh, deburring machine I've got a you know one of those big vibratory tumblers and uh, I haven't decided whether to do that. The other thing that's been bugging me is in the middle of uh, both the Fab Rats and the Moore uh, Matt's Off-Road Recovery plaques, I've had uh, a finishing pass that had a little, uh, a little imperfection in it. And I finally figured it out, something that I read about a long time ago, but it's happening to me. Uh, my machine has an automatic oiler so every four hours it lubricates X, Y, and Z whether you're using it or not. Well if you're just making a regular cut 
you don't you can't really notice it but if you're making a finishing cut that you want to be glass smooth and the oiler comes on it perturbates the ways enough that you can see it in the finish Oh, it's not catastrophic, but it is annoying. And so I figured that out over the weekend. I spent, well, over the, over the last week, I spent a whole week in the hospital with my wife. So I had not much to do except to think. Um, and so I figured that, <clears throat> figured that out. And so I set my oiler to a span, uh, an interval that was longer than the, how long it took to cut the finishing pieces. And I've got no problem now so I've I've written myself a note when you're my age and you got old brain cells and you only got two of them while you, you run your life by notes and lists um, at any rate uh, the finish on this one is just about a just about perfect I, in fact I would say it's perfect but you know hardly every anything is perfect uh, at any rate I'm very pleased with it and I think Sam will be too so I've got to, I've got to chamfer some some holes for those uh, those flathead screws. Drill six uh, holes and then cut it out of the cut it out of the big block and then take of course the, the super glue and the tape and whatnot off of it. But uh, at any rate, I'm building this thing for Sam. I've taken uh, uh, time elapsed pictures of it and I realized in the last couple of videos just putting those all together at the end. It's probably pretty boring without any explanation, so I hope I'm going to do a better job this time. Okay, all the machining is done. Trying to uh, add some footage to this video so that it makes a little bit of sense. And then I need to get this thing on the way to... Uh, on the way to Sam for his uh, for his Jeep. So, uh, as you know, when Sam sent me the the drawing, uh, he kind of gave me latitude to uh, to make it quote look cool. Um, and what's typically done is that a part is cut out and then powder coated, sera coated, uh, anodized, whatever. And you and if you do two two layers of powder coat or powder coat in a in a silk screen or whatever you can get things like this well I don't really have Cerakote or powder coat or anodizing capability here in my shop and to go take one little part to somebody is a little bit of a pain and it's also quite expensive so for my own things and now for Sam's things and fab rats and whatnot I've discovered that I can make the part interesting by controlling the tool paths. And so this radial pattern that you see in the background there isn't needed to make the part. It's, it's just two thousandths of an inch of aluminum that's taken off at the very last thing to produce an interesting pattern. And then um, you'll see that uh, I also face the part the very first operation I face the part um, with steps very close to each other which gives me another pattern going horizontally and other than that the parts cut out pretty pretty normally it's uh, multiple depths with some chamfering and and uh, um, that's that's kind of what it is and so I'm gonna uh, put some uh, CAD CAM stuff in here next that will uh, that will show you kind of the process that I went through, and uh, then we'll show you the machining operations, um, and it'll make a little more sense when you see what the machine is doing by by seeing the CAD and then the the CAM, which is the uh, CAD is computer aided design, CAM is computer aided manufacturing, which in its simplest terms meaning means taking a 3D model and turning it into numerical code that a machine understands and one of the beauties of Fusion 360 is that it has an excellent simulator so you make all your mistakes in the computer do all your adjustments and whatnot uh, 
in the computer and then you can simulate it and you can see how it's going to cut. You can see where material is removed. You can change order of operations. There's a lot of nice things about having a simulator. That when you that way when you get on the milling machine, you just make one part. You don't you don't learn and make and learn and make and learn and make. Uh, you just get to make one and that's that's kind of fits into my mode. I like to plan a lot and then execute once. So on to the CAD portion now. Okay, here's the genesis of our little part. A lot of objects start out as a sketch. And so I went to the internet, downloaded uh, a Rolls Royce logo, went to Inkscape, converted it into a DXF, and then I imported it into Fusion 360 and scaled it down for my part. Then I incorporated it into a bigger sketch, which is the entirety of the part. You can see that it's that that at one time I had a bolt circle drawn in here, and the little artifacts are left. So there's here's the raised outer rim. This portion is raised, but not as much. This portion is raised, uh, and so these individual pieces can be extruded into a 3D model. So let's turn the sketch off and turn on the bodies. So here's the 3D model from the sketch and I just extruded each one of these pieces up to the right height to make the model. I could have put chamfers on everything included the countersink on the bolt holes uh, but I don't generally do that uh, it's easy to do chamfers and countersinks uh, in the cam version of this program or the can the cam section of this program so let's go there so we want manufacturing Okay, here is our cam portion. Uh, the setup is a, a block of aluminum that's three by four by a quarter of an inch. The, uh, these are the operations that will be done to it. We can look at them. So the first operation is a facing operation. It's done with a quarter inch end mill. And I specifically controlled the step over to be very shallow because on on these portions here, um, that's actually going to be a finished product feature. And so after the facing is done, then we do uh, we go with the same quarter inch and then we do uh, 3D adaptive. On this center section and what that does adaptive is a, uh, a cutting strategy that keeps the cutter cutting at maximum uh, depth and width whenever possible and since this part is glued down to the uh, sacrificial plate um, I don't put very much force on my end mill so I'm doing a uh, uh, 25 thousandths of an inch depth of cut and 25 thousandths of an inch width of cut and each one of these blue lines is a cut and so the program optimizes the the number of cuts and the location of cuts so that it so that the tool is always cutting as efficiently as it can and so there's a couple different levels for this anyway the tool r removes everything from this design that a quarter of an inch end mill will fit into. And then we do uh, a start cutout. And this is something I've been doing. I may stop doing it, but uh, I partially cut out the, pro the, the piece, but not all the way. See this remaining stock down here. What that allows me to do is to chamfer these edges. Uh, and the chamfering tool will run in this, in this uh, hollow part here so I don't have to gouge out a bunch of material with the chamfering tool anyway that's the reason for that 
Then we go to a sixteenth of an inch mill, 3D adaptive again, and there's a lot of places the quarter of inch end mill couldn't go. Well, the sixteenth end mill can go more places, and so it cuts all of those pieces that a sixteenth inch end mill can cut. And note that there are some places that even it can't go. This little, this little uh, shape right in here can't be cut at all, which brings us to the one millimeter, which is uh, 39 thousandths of an inch. And so it will clean up all these little sharp corners, cut that little square in there. Uh, and it, it really, it's 10, 10 levels because this, this tiny end mill, uh, I only uh, cut 10 thousandths of an inch depth of cut and 10 thousandths of an inch width of cut. Then we do the radial pattern, which gives us our nice st starburst. It takes two thousandths of an inch off the um, floor. And then we've got uh, uh, chamfering to uh, cut down all the sharp edges. Uh, if you don't chamfer, these edges are razor sharp. Then we do a couple of cleanup passes, and then we finish our cutout. And now all these parts are separate, but they're still glued down to the sacrificial plate. Then we do a spot drill, which gives us our countersink for the uh, 1032 flathead bolts. And then we drill, and we're all done. So let's simulate it. And you can see what the machine's going to do, but uh, you don't have to sit around for 12 hours to watch it to find out if there are any errors. So first we do a facing operation. I'm going to speed that up a little bit. Taking 10 thousandths off the top, make it nice and flat. Then we do a quarter of inch end mill uh, 3D adaptive. And then we do half the partial cutout. This is a 1 16th inch end mill and it's cutting three different levels to get deep enough and part of one of those some of those levels include the uh, the big recess around the bolt holes okay it's just about finished we're going to convert to the one millimeter here pretty quick. Okay, here's the one millimeter, 10 different levels, and it just works its way down to the bottom. Now we're doing the radial starburst pattern, and then chamfer, and uh, now we're doing the cutout. So now the part is free, still glued down, but free, and then we countersink and drill. And that's all there is to it.
Okay, so here's where we are right now. You can see that uh, all the major and minor operations are done. I have uh, did a little uh, center point drill for my holes, and then I need to chamfer them and then cut it out. And so we'll finish this up here pretty quick. Okay, we have a problem, but I have a solution. I let this thing sit overnight between operations, and unfortunately my coolant is, has uh, snuck in under the part and loosened the glue. And so this thing is a little bit loosey-goosey, as you saw when I was uh, drilling before. So the solution is to go ahead and drill and tap down into my sacrificial plate in a couple of places and then screw it down and then I can go ahead and finish cutting it out and uh, hope for the best. Okay, we got the plate bolted down, and now I'll be able to do my cutout, and then uh, I think I'm done. As usual, if you like or dislike my video, please select the appropriate button and let me know why. I really appreciate comments and I will answer every one. If you're new to my videos, please select the subscribe and the notification bell to get more videos like this.